Autumn is finally here, and what better way to celebrate than to celebrate the festival of the season, Mabon. Mabon is a beautiful celebration that marks the autumn equinox, a time when day and night are perfectly balanced. Named after Mabonat Modron, the divine son of the divine mother, the festival symbolizes youth, light, and rebirth. It's all about giving thanks for the harvest, appreciating the changing of the seasons, and all of the wonderful cozy warmth that comes with it. And I thought, what better way to honor this wonderful season than to create a ritual candle for my altar? This is nice and easy to make, and there's no wrong way of making it as you can put your own personal spin on this and decorate it in whichever way you'd like. It's also very cheap, as I only needed to pay for the candle, which was about four pounds in Tesco. Now for the ingredients. The first thing you'll need for this, and the thing that we'll be decorating today, is a candle. You should be able to find a candle in most supermarkets or homeware shops. You might even be lucky enough to find a cheap one in your local charity shop, or you might even have a spare one kicking around at home. Remember the bigger and chunkier, the better for this particular crafting activity, as this will make it easier to fix the herbs onto. And also remember that the candle cannot be inside any receptacle like a glass jar, as we'll be decorating the surface of the wax. It also doesn't matter what the wax is made out of, whether it's paraffin, beeswax or soy. It also doesn't really matter what color or scent the candle is. But it would be nice to find one that reminds you of the harvest season, such as a brown or yellow color. Perhaps with a smell of cinnamon or gingerbread. Mine is just a chunky yellowish pillar candle made of paraffin wax. Next, you will need a carving implement. A pencil will do, as the wax should be soft enough for it to carve into. Now here you can carve any symbol that you like, something that is special to you, whether it's your initials or initials of a loved one, a pentagram or a personal sigil. Here I have carved the rune Soilo, representing the sun, solar energy and life force, and daggers representing balance, the transition from darkness to light, and new opportunities which I thought was perfect for Mabon. Next comes the really fun part, making the herb mix. This will decorate the outside of the candle and really imbue it with our intentions. I used fruits and herbs that reminded me of the sun and of the harvest season. I grated the peel of an orange and a lemon, as the citrus will give the candle energy, and both fruits represent the sun. I also used some rosemary from my garden, as this has such a wonderful smell and can provide you with protection and mental clarity. I actually have a chamomile plant at home, but they sadly don't have any flowers, so I cheated a little and bought some chamomile tea bags. I sprinkled everything into the bowl and gave it all a good mix. Now time to decorate our candle. To make the herbs stick to the candle, you will need some sort of oil. Witches tend to go for an essential oil with an ingredient that holds a specific power for that spell, such as orange oil for energy and creativity, or frankincense for spiritual growth. I'm a little low on funds this month, so I just used what I already owned, some lavender oil, which thankfully is also used for spells pertaining to peace and relaxation, which I could do with as we head into the colder months. Now, supposedly you rub the entire candle in the oil and then roll the candle onto the herbs to get them to stick. This, however, didn't work for me, and so I had to cheat a little once again. I found that if I oiled the candle, pressed the herbs on, and then wrapped the entire thing in foil and baked on a low heat for a few minutes. This melted the surface of the candle ever so slightly, and the herbs were much better at sticking to the thing. There's no real right or wrong way to do this spell. Just do whatever works for you, with the abilities and resources that you have. Whilst the candle was cooling in the foil, I went out into my garden to pick some flowers. Despite it being quite late in the year, Oxide daisies are still around in this part of Wales, and I picked the largest one to decorate my candle with. I also went down to the coast where there are still an abundance of flowers. I believe I picked some elder flowers? I'm still a novice when it comes to identifying plants in the wild, but they were certainly beautiful. I also thinly sliced some lemon and orange to also use as a decoration. I used some jute string that I had lying around the house. It's just a cheap natural fibre string that I use for odd tasks in my garden. Any string will do to attach your decorations to your candle. I used some melted wax from an old birthday candle to stick the delicate daisy onto the candle. Again, there's no wrong way of doing this, and you can add whatever decorations you'd like to your creation. You could tie on some sticks of cinnamon, some slices of apple perhaps, or even just some paper drawings if that takes your fancy. The candle is now done and ready to perform the ritual for the harvest. 
I decided to light my candle outside, which is probably the wisest thing to do as it was covered in many flammable materials. If you do decide to light yours indoors, ensure to have a bucket of water at hand and never leave it unattended. I lit the candle as the sun began to set and thanked Mother Earth for providing food aplenty for all of her children. I also set an intention to remember the warmth and the energy of the summer and bring it with me as I approach the cold winter months ahead. 